Okay, so let's look at some more advanced topology um, topics, right? Okay, so I have this project here and we have some uh, schematics already created. And we want to um, import a DXF or DWG and create a topology page off of that. So let's go ahead and do that part. I'm going to import a DWG file. And I'm going to look at the scheme or the settings here. I want to make sure that this is set uh, adapt page scale. So the graphics will import in a one to one uh, manner, but the ePlan page scale will um, adapt accordingly, right? So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, we will not give this a location, but we will give this a document type corresponding to topology. Page description, topology overview. It's going to do its thing and import all these graphics. Okay, uh, so let's have a look at this. I'm going to delete some of these outer edges. Don't really need that. Let's look at the page scale. So it did about a 1 to 50. Let's see if we can take that down to 40. Try to fit more on one page. Maybe 30. And then we can move that around. Okay. Okay, so we have our page. Um, if we look at the properties of this page, we'll notice that um, right now it's just set at the page type of graphic. So we need to change this to topology. Um, and that should be everything we need to do there. And now we need to add the symbol library appropriate for that scaling. So we're gonna go to our project settings and then under management symbol libraries, here we'll find um, that where we can add that. If you remember from my last video, we have some different uh, topology symbol libraries. This would be your one-to-one, -one, your standard uh, symbol library. Then you have one for uh, 20, one to 20 scaling, 50 and 100. So what about this um, one to 30 situation? So we can go ahead and create a symbol library very quickly. So we'll go up to master data, symbol library and scale. We're going to select our source symbol library. We'll just use the standard one-to-one -one topology. So that will be the topology IEC topology symbol. Go ahead and select that. Uh, we'll go ahead and name the target. So I'll just select, I'll select, let's say this M20 and I'll just change it to M30. Keep that same uh, naming convention. And then the grid, I'll just increase this, um, I'll increase this uh, grid size here to 60. And we want to scale it by a factor of 30. And go ahead and hit OK. See, it instantly did that. Now we need to go add that symbol library back in. I'll just add it here on uh, position 4, which is currently open. And there's our symbol library that we just created, right? Okay, so now it's added in. All right, so the first thing we want to look at is our enclosure. And for this, it makes sense to use a structure routing path. So first we need to draw a structure box. Um, again, we need to create or change the grid size on the page. I'm just going to go with, uh, let's start with 100 millimeters turn the grid on and that should be uh, perfect for what we're doing. So we'll draw a structure box around this enclosure. This will be our power distribution panel. Go ahead and apply that. Um, of course, if we want to label that, we can go into our uh, settings here. And we can increase all this font size. Let's start with um, 50 and see how that looks. Not bad, maybe 60, just a little bit bigger. Okay, that looks more or less pretty good. Then we need to place um, a structure routing, routing point inside of this. So I can go to symbols, IC topology M30, 
And then here we'll see one of our routing points. We can expand this table to read it. So topology, routing point, circle, and star, either one. Uh, let's say I'll use the star in this example. You have different variants for that also, uh, which way you want it to point. I'll change this to a topology structure routing point. Okay. Need to um, create our locations for these different um, different uh, motor locations, right? Or we can just drag the devices out themselves. So if we go over to 20, let's have a look at this. We have our grinding conveyor and our inbound and outbound conveyor. So back to the topology page. For those, it could make sense that we just place how uh, we just place the individual um, devices, right? So I can go over here to our grinding station and take this motor and drag it out. Okay. I can just place it, let's say, somewhere in the middle over here, like that. You can always adjust the text uh, later. Okay, and then uh, this would be our inbound conveyor, and this would be our outbound conveyor. So we can go ahead and name those accordingly. Drop those in. Okay. And then we have this guy over here. This will be our HMI station. Let's look at uh, where that's at on our schematic. It's over here in page 100. Currently, since it's uh, just on this page, which is in the power distribution panel location, ePlan thinks that this panel, this HMI station, is likewise there, um, but it's really out in the field, so we need to identify that. The structure box. And I will identify this as SF for second floor. We can always go back to our structure identifier uh, management here and add the description. Go to location, second floor, for example. Okay, now we'll go back to the topology page, and we can do the same thing there. Take our second floor device, place it over here. Okay. So now we need to connect everything, right? What I'll, uh, what I'll do over here is I'll draw just a rectangle. If we go to graphics, let's identify this as the second floor with a rectangle with the dashed line. Draw text, make sure it's big enough. Okay because we're going to do something pretty neat with that. Um, we'll use what we call a partial routing path. Okay, so I'm gonna start drawing my routing path. So I'll go over here to the, um, the insert section on the ribbon, go to the topology um, routing path. Start at the edge of our routing, routing point there. And this is more or less a polyline, I can hit X on the keyboard to make sure I'm in ortho mode. And then here we'll stop. I'm gonna go ahead and hit space to finish that. Uh, the device tag I'm not too concerned with for that. Next I'm gonna place one of these um, routing points. You should remember that one from last time. Um, let's go ahead and place here. 
That uh, makes it easier using a larger grid for this reason, as you can see. Place one there. Now let's go ahead and connect those. We'll use our topology routing path. Turn on the object snap for this. Routing path from here to here. Those are connected. Connect this down here. That. This. Okay, and then I'm going to go over here. Make sure I'm in ortho mode, hitting X. And then let's say we stop it right about here and then hit um, space to finish it. Place one more, one of these um, routing points. Then we'll go up here, place one of those routing points. And then we'll connect it with the routing path. Okay, so when something is on a, a separate level, a second floor, or things of that nature, we typically want to represent it with what we call a partial routing path. You can see that here in this uh, section of the insert center. We have these symbols here. This one is for facing down. This one's for facing up. And you can read the text. It'll tell you that over here. Partial routing path upwards and downwards. So let's go ahead and use the upward one here. That's this guy here. Of course, you have different variants. Uh, but typically, of course, it makes sense for this one to point up. This needs to be placed on top of an existing routing point. Okay, so we'll place it right there. And then we need to select the length. So let's say that the um, this is 10 feet, right? 10 feet on the second floor from the um, first floor. Remember that this is 12. That's the device tag. That'll be important in a second. Now we need to place the, um, the corresponding one that points downwards. Again, place it on the existing routing point. We do not need to fill out the routing length. We just need to match the device tag and make sure that this one, only one of them should be the main function. And whichever one's the main function, that's where you define the length. Okay. And you can see that it picks up the length. So this is plus 10. This is negative 10. Okay. And then um, we still have this one over here. So let's take care of that as well. Go back and draw another routing path. Yep, that's all connected. And then we need to make sure that this uh, this has assigned as a structure routing point, and it is structure routing point and connected structure. So this is where you could define a filter. If we only want terminal strips to be included, we can do that. Function, definition. Terminal strip definition. Okay. Now we can touch, uh, highlight this one and go up to connections, topology, generate functions automatically. And what it probably will probably happen there is since our filter is set, we need to also include terminals for that to um, be allowed. If we go over to our page 20, we can get an idea of what we're trying to do. We're trying to take these terminal strips and include them into that uh, structure routing point. So if I synchronize selection and just look at this in the device navigator, um, actually I'll need the terminal navigator for that. Okay, I want to make sure that there's no terminal strip definition already created. Um, so we'll go back. We could probably add that to the filter or um, just remove the filter altogether. I just wanted to really highlight that. So we'll just remove this and then now it should definitely work. Highlight that again and go to connections, generate, generate functions automatically. Now we have two new functions, so let's have a look at what happened there. 
Um, we'll go highlight that and then go generate manually and we can see. Okay, so we have the ground and the TB4. Okay. So it also included our, um, our ground bus bar. But that's okay. Shouldn't be a problem. Let's go back to the topology page and let's do our routing. So control A to highlight everything on the page, connections, and then in the topology section, we click route. And indeed, everything is purple, so we know everything did route. Okay, and then if we go back over here, you'll see you have your cable lengths and everything filled in, right? Okay, and we can also look at something like the fill capacity. If I open up one of these routing, um, routing paths, and let's say I determine that this is a, this has a cross section of one inch. Like that routing path, hit fill capacity, and then open up the properties again. And there you can see we have a fill capacity of 2%. If I was to change this to 0.5 inch and redo it, you'll see that the fill capacity will increase. Recalculate it. Now it's more or less 8%. Okay. There's also a number of topology reports that may be interesting. Look at routed cables, connections, routing path diagram, routing path list. Let's look at the routing path list. Let's look at the forms here. We'll just use one of these standard forms. I'll put it in the map section, append to the end, and let's go ahead and generate that. So here's the list of all our, our routing paths. We can also place a routing path diagram directly onto the page. So if I go to reports, do a manual placement of the routing path diagram and choose current page as our selection criteria. Uh, we need to make sure we apply the form from this level. Choose that form there. Try that again. Then here we have the routing path diagram. Okay, we can also have a look at one more report. Routed cables and connections. Choose your form. Go ahead and put it in that map structure also. Generate. Here's our report, routed cables and connections. I'm going to close up some of these uh, navigators here. And it shows you all the information about your cables and how they've been routed and the routing track that they've been routed through. All right, so I hope all of this was helpful. Thank you very much.